بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Surah Al-Duha is one of the beautiful surahs of the Qur'an and one of the very beginning surahs, one of the first surahs in the beginning of the Mecca da'wah period. Al-Duha is the time that comes after sunrise and before noon. And that is why we have Duha prayer. After Fajr, you're not allowed to pray until the sun rises about 10 to 15 minutes, then you may pray voluntary prayer and you can do this just about 10 minutes before Dhuhr prayer is due, Dhuhr Adhan. So this is known as Duha, it's the beginning of the day. And this surah, it was said that when the Prophet ﷺ received the revelation and he called people to Islam, there came a short period of time when the revelation stopped and the people, the disbelievers, mocked the Prophet ﷺ, telling him that your Lord has forsaken you. He has left you. He's not giving you any revelation. Your devil that accompanies you is the one who gives you this revelation. He's gone from you. So. Allah Azza wa Jal revealed this beautiful surah showing his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the numerous blessings and favors of Allah upon him. And Allah says, وَالضُّحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى Allah swears by the forenoon and by the night when it is still or by its darkness. So Allah Azza wa Jal is again morning and evening, day and night. What is Allah Azza wa swearing by? Allah says, مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Your Lord has neither forsaken you nor hated you. Unlike what the disbelievers mock and say about you, O Muhammad وسلم, Allah did not leave you. Allah does not hate you. Allah loves you. You are the most beloved creature to Allah the Almighty. And then Allah Azza wa Jal tells his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that don't be concerned about this dunya. This dunya is a transitional period. Don't be worried about it. Because indeed the hereafter is better for you than the present, meaning this life that you live in. So it is not worthy of you being worried or depressed because what awaits you is far greater than what you are having here. And rest assured, verily your Lord will give you so that you shall be satisfied or well pleased. Allah will give you until you are well pleased. And this is a promise from Allah Azza wa Jal. And if you look at the biography of the Prophet Sam, you will find that he was the most content and the most pleased person of all times. And then Allah Azza wa Jal lists down some of his favors and blessing upon his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says, Alam yajidika yateeman fa'awa Didn't Allah Azza wa Jal find you an orphan and gave you refuge, gave you shelter. We all know that the Prophet والسلام, his father died when he was in his mother's womb. So while his mother was pregnant, he became an orphan. And before he finished six years of age, his mother died. And his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, took him in. And one or two years later, his grandfather died and his uncle Abu Talib took care of him. So since the very beginning of his life, it was a tragedy after a tragedy and a misery after misery, only so that 
No one could take care of him except Allah Azza wa Jal. No father, no mother, and no grandfather. It was Allah who brought him up, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Found him an orphan and gave him refuge and a shelter. Allah says, وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى And he found you unaware and guided you. The Prophet did not know, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Qur'an. Did not know the revelation. Did not know what to do and what not to do. All what he had was his pure nature. He refused to worship the idols with the idol worshippers, though it was the norm and everybody did it. He refused to eat anything that was slaughtered other than the name of Allah. So if they slaughtered their sheep and sacrificed it to their idols, he would not consume anything out of it. So Allah Azza wa Jal found him and he did not know and Allah guided him, the Almighty. And Allah found him poor and made him rich. In the sense that the Prophet ﷺ once said, no messenger before me would not care for the sheep and become a shepherd. Every single messenger had shepherd and had cared for the sheep. And they said, you too, Prophet of Allah? He said, I as well did this. I took care of the sheep of so-and-so in Mecca for a number of coins or a number of qararit. So even the Prophet himself was a shepherd. He was in need of money because his uncle Abu Talib was poor and he had lots of children. And then Allah Azza wa blessed him by marrying Khadija who was rich and she treated him as he deserved to be treated. So it is Allah Azza wa who transformed his life from poverty to wealth. This is part of Allah's grace upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, Allah Azza wa tells him, فَأَمَّ الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ As you were an orphan and Allah Azza wa Jal gave you refuge, therefore treat not the orphan with oppression. And in Islam, it is one of the major sins to treat an orphan with oppression. And it was one of the best deeds that would elevate your level in paradise to take care of the orphans. This is part of Islam. This is part of the essence of Islam, to take care of the orphans, of the needy, of the poor. And it shows you the beauty of Islam. It is an, a religious obligation. It's not something that you do because you're kind or you're nice or you want to be acknowledged among the people. And repulse not the beggar. And the sa'il, the one who asks, Usually it refers to a person who begs, who needs, who's in need. So him, do not talk in a harsh way. Do not repulse. But also, sa'il can mean a person who seeks knowledge, as in the case of the blind man, if you remember. So if there is a blind man, if there is someone who's in need of knowledge, and he comes to you, you should not repulse him. You should not reject him. You should be kind to him. And this is the norm. This is generally speaking, unless there are exceptions if people are impolite or ask questions that are inappropriate and insist on making a scene. Sometimes you have to reprimand such people. But the norm is, no, you have to do this in the fashion that Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to do. The one who comes seeking knowledge, you have to try and give him what you have. And the one who asks for help, you should assist him in the way that you can. And proclaim the grace of your Lord. Allah Azza wa Jal says that whatever Allah favors you with, Whatever Allah graces you with, you should proclaim it. You should announce it. Don't say, I did this and I did that. It is Allah Azza wa Jal who had given it to you. It is Allah Azza wa Jal who made things easy for you. And from this beautiful surah, we 
see the favors and blessings of Allah Azza wa upon his messenger. And this is an eye opener for us to see Allah's numerous favors and blessings upon us. And we learn that the road to Jannah is far greater than what we're living for in this life. This is a transitional period. And the hereafter is better for you than this life. And this is addressed to the Prophet So we should not fight and strive so hard to collect this life on the account of the hereafter. It should be the other way around. We should strive here to reach the highest level in paradise as Allah Azza wa Jal ordered his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. This is the conclusion of Surah Al-Duha. We have a short break, so stay tuned. A night of decree is better than a thousand months. The benefits of worship and the vigil in the night of power. Ramadan, which is the topic of the show. Do you have any advice for our viewers? Asad Ahmad. Especially in this, in the blessed month of Ramadan. The Ramadan is the reminder of rectifying our behavior. Dr. Ali Ali Shaban. Ramadan is a unique opportunity for every Muslim. And the reasons behind this revelation and its power emphasized as the human heart transcends towards godly glory. If you apply Ramadan to the rest of the year, Tariq Ali. Surely you are going to be much, much better in all fields, all aspects. And the gratitude of the soul reaches out to worship the Almighty One on this esteemed night. Just to, to stick the more and more of time to the Holy Quran. Dr. Muhammad Ibrahim. This is my advice to all my Muslim brothers. Let's strive to seek the night of power and its bliss in Blessed Nights tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 3.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. The Book of Allah is the foundation of Islamic civilization and the way out of every trial. Every generation of Muslims needs to develop a relationship with the Qur'an. So join me, Riyaz Ansari, for reflections on the Qur'an. Explore how the Qur'an has a wondrous impact on those who receive it as a book of guidance in Reflections on the Qur'an with Riyaz Ansari. Tomorrow, at 8 p.m. and repeat telecast at 8.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. We are not addicted to Dawa. Addiction implies a short-term fix. One doesn't need to get into the zone to talk about Islam. You do da'wah because it is a natural result of your commitment to Allah. If you don't talk, people are gonna walk. The most effective combination in the propagation of true Islam is found in Dawa Ilullah. Join me, Arib Islam, as we go through Dawa Ilullah only on Peace TV. Follow the tips to make the task of Dawa result oriented in Dawa Ilallah next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Surat Al-Sharh, Al-Inshirah, the expansion of the chest. Chapter number 94, Allah Azza wa Jal again shows his favors and blessings upon his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Allah says, Alam nashrah laka sadrak? Have we not opened your chest for you? Open your breasts 
for you. And this is not physically in the sense that Allah has expanded the chest of his messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. And how would that be? Well, Allah Azza wa Jal has purified physically and mentally his messenger's heart. Twice, Jibreel came and opened his chest, took his heart and washed it in a plate of gold in Zamzam water, cleansed it from hatred, envy, grudges, and put it back again, physically. And this is a miracle. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ was the kindest of all man. He had no grudges. He had no hatred. And if you go through his biography, you cannot hold yourself from loving him, from feeling what he went through sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah Azza wa Jal is telling his messenger, have we not opened your chest? Didn't we install in it the satisfaction and the content, no matter what happens, but you feel this. And this is from Allah Azza wa Jal, a given favor without the Prophet seeking it. Allah is telling him, didn't we do this for you? While Musa, who is also a great messenger of Allah Azza wa Jal, he requested it from Allah. When he said, Rabbi shrah li sadri, O oh Allah, expand my chest. The Prophet was given this without him asking, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this shows you how much Allah Azza wa Jal loves him. Alam nashrah laka sadrak, wa wada'na anka wizrak, and removes from you your burden. So Allah Azza wa Jal has forgiven the Prophet Sallallahu previous and coming sins. And the messengers of Allah, all of them, they do not do major sins. They may do minor sins out of a mistake, out of an error, but immediately they repent to Allah. But major sins, they never do this. Peace and praise of Allah be upon him and upon them all. Alam nashrah laka sadrak wa wada'na anka wizrak alladhi anqada dhahrak this burden, this sin that weighed down your back because the Prophet ﷺ always feared his sins and he didn't have any sins like we do. Nevertheless, he used to seek Allah's forgiveness at least a hundred times a day. And we rarely seek Allah's forgiveness once a month maybe. But the Prophet used to always say, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. I seek Allah's forgiveness and I repent to Allah. So Allah Azza wa is displaying to us how fearful the Prophet ﷺ was. And the fear and knowledge go side by side. The more you know of Allah, the more you fear Him. And the lesser your knowledge of Allah is, the lesser your fear is. And that is why the majority of Muslims do not know Allah because you can see it clearly that we do not fear Allah as we're supposed to. Allah showed his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa one of his favors and blessings by saying, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ And raised high your fame, your name, your mentioning. And this is obvious. Allah Azza wa Jal has raised the mentioning of the Prophet alayhi Nowhere you will hear the name of Allah being called except hearing the name of the Prophet ﷺ being called with him. And what more favor and what more fame one would ask for. A few years ago, the Danish cartoons tried to depict the Prophet ﷺ and ridicule him. They tried to disgrace him وسلم, and no way anyone could do this no matter how hard you try. You can make your movies about him, you can make cartoons about him. Whatever you do, Allah Azza wa Jal would elevate and exalt his mentioning. You cannot discredit the Prophet Nowhere No where on earth that you cannot hear the Prophet's name being mentioned. Five times a day, 
the adhan is being called. This shows you that Allah Azza wa Jal has elevated his mentioning and his name. No matter how negative things you say about him, the biographies are all there and people know that no one was like him in his kindness, in his love, in his care, in his preaching of Islam and virtue and spreading goodness everywhere, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who raised high his fame, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So after all of these favors and blessings, no matter what you face, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in this world, no matter how hardship comes to you and how evil things people do to you, don't despair. Allah says, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى So verily with hardship, there is relief. Verily with the hardship, there is relief. Allah repeated it twice. And in Arabic, the word hardship is Al-Usr. And Al means the particular hardship. Allah says, so verily with the hardship, there is relief. Not the relief, there is relief, which is so general and open. And Allah Azza wa repeated that by saying, verily with the hardship, the same one previously mentioned, there is again relief, which means that there is a lot of relief. And some say two reliefs would always beat one hardship. And this is the norm. Allah Azza wa Jal, whenever He closes a door for you, there are 10 more doors open. And this is Allah's generosity. Whenever He closes a door, it's not the end of the world. There are always lots of doors open for you, but you have to look. So many times we come to a place where we want to enter, we push the door, and it doesn't open. We push hard, we push hard, and it doesn't open and we give up and we're frustrated. And if we look a little bit closer, you will find that there's a sign saying, pull. And that is why the door did not open. So always think of other solutions because Allah Azza wa Jal, if He abrogates one ayah, He gives you better than it, as He stated in the Quran either better than it or similar to it. So whenever Allah abrogates an ayah, this is what happens. And when Allah Azza wa introduces a hardship, He opens tens and hundreds and thousands of other opportunities of ease for you. So never despair and never give up. Allah says, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبَ And when you have finished, then stand up for Allah's worship. وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرَغَبَ and to your Lord, turn your invocations. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ Whenever you threw of any deed, then again, engage yourself in another deed. So if you finish praying, engage yourself in things that bring you benefit in this world. Go and work. If you finish working, engage yourself in circles of knowledge. If you finish off circle of knowledge, go and visit your parents and ask for their satisfaction and try to please them. If you finish from that, go and fast voluntary fasting, give in charity, work to get a promotion at work, read a useful book, be with your kids. Always keep constantly doing things that are beneficial, whether in forms of worship or in this worldly matter. Some people say that we will stay in the masjid, read Quran, and that is it. Who will feed you? There are people who would give us food. No, Allah does not like the lower hand. Allah loves the upper hand that gives. Go and work. Go and try to progress and develop things, improve things. Get a higher education, get an MBA, get a PhD. Do something that's useful for you and for the community. But all the time, keep in mind وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ That whatever you do, do it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, asking Allah Azza wa Jal 
to give you and to grant you because success comes only from Allah and from Allah alone. This is all the time we have until we meet next time fi amalillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. هذا القرآن يوحدنا لطريق الخير يوجهنا الله تعالى